If you are a homeowner and you've been thinking about selling your home, then this is the right place to be. I'm Heather Wright, a real estate agent here in Des Moines, and I have made a list of the seven top mistakes that sellers make so that you can avoid those mistakes because if it's going to cost you money, you don't want to do it, right? So don't make these mistakes and lose unnecessary money. And if you're a buyer in the greater Des Moines metro area, then up here or maybe up here somewhere, I'm going to have a link to a video that I recently did on the mistakes that buyers should avoid when they're purchasing a property. So for you sellers, the number one mistake you can avoid, and if this is as far as you watch in the video, then you'll still save money by not making this mistake. But the number one mistake that sellers can make is not cleaning their home. And that seems kind of like a no brainer. Like, of course I'm going to clean my house, but you'd be surprised. And your level of clean may not be the same level of clean as a buyer's. And we're not here to judge. That is not what this is about. We're here to put your home in the best position possible to get the most money possible. And if that means spending a few hundred dollars and having a cleaning crew come in to do a deep clean and shine up your appliances, even clean inside the microwave and the stove and clean all the, all the baseboards and remove evidence that you have dogs or cats living there. I mean, I have a dog and anytime I go into somebody's house that has dogs, we need to wash their bedding. We need to wash the dog, which is code word bath at my house. And that makes Murphy very nervous, but it's just temporary. So you just have to remove the evidence that you have animals living in the house, or really you're making it look like the people who live in your home are perfect and they have a perfect life. And if you Mr. or Mrs. Buyer were to purchase this house and you lived here, your life would be just as perfect. That's the message that we're trying to convey when we are putting your home in that best light possible. And cleaning, hands down, is the best thing you can do to prepare your house for sale. And it is the number one mistake that sellers make when they assume the market is hot enough that my dirty house will sell because people do not pay premium prices for dirt. I mean, maybe they do like for farmland, but they don't pay premium prices for houses that are dirty. It's weird. They can get their own cleaners to clean, but that's just how it works. These are in a random order other than one and two up front. So my second tip is almost as important as cleaning, but not quite because cleaning is number one. But the second biggest mistake that home sellers can make is not listening to their realtor. You are hiring your realtor to give you advice and to help you with this transaction. And so you should listen to them. And if they're giving you advice that you think, oh, that is terrible advice, or that won't work for me. Well, then that's probably a sign that you have connected yourself to the wrong realtor. So hire a realtor whose advice you will take because not taking the advice of your realtor is a big mistake. Another mistake that is really common that people make because it seems like no big deal is air fresheners. And what happens is if you have like those plug-in Glade air fresheners, which often smell lovely, people come into your house and they think, mm, it smells too nice in here. What are they covering up? So home buyers and their real estate agents are like detectives. They are looking for all of the problems. And when you have a pleasant smelling air freshener, even if you have an unpleasant smelling air freshener, either way, it's going to make them think that you're hiding something because why else would you have an air freshener? Just because you like your home to smell like the beach? Certainly not. It must be covering up a problem. And so you just want to eliminate that possible thought from entering their mind by not having air fresheners. And if there is something that you're trying to cover up, go back to tip number one, cleaning, because maybe you need to have the carpets professionally steam cleaned to get whatever odor out that you're trying to cover up with the air freshener. A really big mistake that can be pretty common is overpricing your house for sale. 
Oftentimes I will give a price to a home seller and I'll say, we should be able to get $400,000 for your house. And the home seller thinks, well, I want to get $400,000. So I should list it for $425,000. So I have room to negotiate. Now, unfortunately, it actually doesn't work like that. So when you list higher than market value, what you're actually doing is you're eliminating a large portion of the pool of buyers who would be willing to purchase it at the market value price. So somebody whose budget is $400,000, they may not be able to go up to 425 if that's where you actually list your house, even though you'll take 400. So you're wasting valuable time by testing the market at that very high price, at that overprice. And then you're also attaching a stigma to your property and yourself. So people might think, oh, no way is that house worth 425. So then they don't look at the property and then they might take that thought process a little bit further and they think they're crazy if they think they're going to get 425. The market will never let you underprice your home. So remember that if you list your house for sale at market value, in this example, $400,000, it may not sell in the first five minutes. And that's good. You actually don't want to sell in the first five minutes. You want to get maximum exposure in a reasonable period of time without wasting time because you don't want your first week on the market to be exposed to people who think, oh, they're crazy. You don't want that. You want people to think, oh, hmm, that looks like really good value for $400,000. I'm going to save that property and schedule a showing for this weekend. Or if we're in a really hot market, I'm going to call my agent right now and schedule a showing because that one looks like it's going to sell quickly. When I say that the market will never let you underprice your house, when there is a pool of buyers, when the demand is there, even if you listed your house under 400, they're going to bid against each other to get up to 400 or maybe even higher than that in the event that inventory is really low or competition is so incredible that people are going to fight over your house, but no one is going to fight over an overpriced listing. So you have to be very careful about that. And if you don't have room to negotiate, that's okay. We'll just negotiate to market value. There's no sense in negotiating that padding above because that's what's going to waste your time and you're ultimately going to lose money because then two weeks go by, you lower the price to 400 and now people are like, oh, it's been on the market for two weeks. There must be something wrong with it. I wouldn't pay more than 395. There goes your 400. So big mistake to avoid overpricing your house. Another mistake for sellers to avoid is not staging your home. Now, some people we would recommend actually get home staging, professional home staging, where they bring in furniture and art and knickknacks and they decorate everything and it looks amazing. And that's going to possibly get you more than what you would get without the staging. But staging in general applies to to every house, whether or not a professional stager comes in, because cleaning is part of staging, decluttering is part of staging, rearranging your own furniture so that the flow improves for visitors in the house. So the house that decides on a whim to list their house for sale, and they're completely disorganized and they have stuff everywhere and it's not clean, tip number one, then, I mean, that's a mistake. That is complete chaos. And it might work for some people who just have an amazing HGTV level of decoration in their home. But for most normal people, myself included, we've got a stage. Before I made this video, I had to hide the exercise foam roller because it was right over my shoulder and that was not good staging for a video. And so you want to think about good staging, not only for your video, but for when your house is up for sale on the market to help present it in the best light possible and not staging or even considering what needs to be staged is a mistake. Another mistake, I think this is number six, although remember only one and two were in any real particular order. So the sixth mistake that a seller could make 
is not giving appropriate attention to your exterior to give your home curb appeal. It's winter time right now when I'm recording this message. It's actually having the great winter melt off right now. So most curb appeal in February, March is kind of brown. It's not really that great. But depending on when you list your house for sale, there may or may not be some things that you can do to improve your curb appeal. If there are any repairs that need to be done to the exterior of your home, well, that is going to improve the curb appeal. If you have any flaking paint or faded paint, correcting those is going to improve your curb appeal. A pot with flowers in it improves your curb appeal. Fresh mulch improves your curb appeal. We have lots of information on how to improve your curb appeal, and it doesn't require professional landscaping, but little things go a long way to making the next owner, your prospective buyer, feel welcome and at home in your property and neglecting the exterior and the curb appeal is a mistake that I think sellers should avoid making because you will lose money if people think, oh, geez, I'm not going to buy that house. Like, look at the outside. There's so much work I have to do there. When really it's not so much work because you can take care of that yourself as the seller, normal home maintenance things. And then you're eliminating that excuse, that objection from that buyer right up front. And that is going to put more money in your pocket. And finally, the seventh mistake that home sellers should avoid is rejecting offers. Let's say all the work that you did to put your home on the market did not result in the amazing offer that you were hoping for. And so sometimes people let their feelings get hurt and they think, no, I'm not going to work with that person because they're crazy. What a terrible offer. I am so insulted. Go away. I'm not selling my house to you ever. Well, come on now, don't do that. Take your emotions out of it. Let your realtor help you negotiate and we can go back and forth and see if we can come to an offer that you would be agreeable to. Just because somebody made a crazy attempt to see what you would say, and trust me, this is what buyers think. They think, well, what's the worst that they could say? No. And so just say no, that's not going to work. But how about this? How about that? How about this? How about that? There's a give and take and rejecting the offer without appropriate negotiation might be shooting yourself in the foot because then that buyer might be offended that you didn't want to negotiate. You know, they put their foot forward. They raised their hand and said, Hey, here's an offer. It may not be good, but here's an offer. It's the start of a conversation. And then when you don't respond, you don't continue that conversation Well, you could be shutting the door on a great buyer just because they're not there yet. They just need a little bit of negotiating to get to the point where you're okay with. So that is my final tip for sellers to not reject offers, try and negotiate with every offer that you receive, take your realtor's advice on how to handle those situations because they're the professional. And I know I certainly know how to negotiate. And I am certain that all of my colleagues out there know how to as well, because I work with them on a daily basis. I know that they're all very good negotiators. And if you feel like the agent that you have connected with, you don't like their advice or their negotiation skills, well, you picked wrong. That's it. Those are my seven mistakes for sellers to avoid making to get top dollar in the sale of their home. And if you would like more information on selling your house, underneath this video, there is a link to download the ultimate guide to selling your house, which is something we provide all of our home sellers. And uh, you can register and I'll email it right over. Also, if you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that button right now because we've got lots of great content planned to share with you all about buying and selling, living and moving in the greater Des Moines area. I'll talk to you soon.